and welcome to my show. I hope you enjoyed uh, the show that runs before the Dairy Show. That's the Me on Five show, in which we're now uh, running a special about the Maine Senior Games, uh, an event that I participate in every year, and uh, we had some of my friends on that show. <clears throat> well, tonight we're going to continue along uh, with the, uh, the line of celebrities, my last show being two celebrities walking into a TV studio. But today, I'm doing a show with one of my very dearest friends. And all I can tell you is that he is simply the most talented man I know personally. And you would say, well, wait a second, you know Bobby Rydell personally, you know Frankie uh, Avalon personally, uh, 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 the son of Don Everly. Well, the reason why this man is the most talented man I know personally is because he is the epitome of what Frank Sinatra, Gene Kelly, and Donald O'Connor were. If you ever see the movie, That's Entertainment, they show the best clips that was done by MGM. And they would show Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor singing, dancing, and acting, both comedy and drama. The gentleman I have with me today can do all of them, and his name is the talented Ed Romanoff. Ed, welcome aboard. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. I, that, that's an introduction I don't think I'll ever hear again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Somebody, somebody once referred to me as a great natural athlete, and I said, you know, no one's ever going to say that again. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to morph into, uh, what's his name, Lipton? Lip, 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 Lipton. Yeah. James Lipton. James Lipton yeah. uh, on the actor's studio, folks. I'm going to morph into that role from time to time, and I'm going to start off with this. Two trivia questions. Uh, I'm <clears throat> going to fail miserably. Yeah, well, the first one is this, Mr. Romanoff. Um, I want you to tell me the role that you performed that I would consider to be the best you ever did. And the hint I'm going to give you was I saw an actor do this on Broadway. I saw two actors do it in the movies. And I saw an actor do the same role in television. Mr. Romanoff, what would that role be? Holy cow. <laughs> and I did it? You did this role better than any of the four people I'm mentioning. On Broadway, two motion pictures, one television. Yeah. yeah. You, got, you got me started. Here I am, failing miserably. Yes, I, right. I have... Okay. The role was Bialystok, played oh, by geez. Nathan Lane, <laughs> Zero <laughs> Muscal, and Larry <laughs> David. And you were... Andy, <gasps> when you got that role, did you say to yourself... Uh, Mel Brooks wrote this role for me. Did you think that, Tears? Because I thought that when I watched it, you, you were, I mean, was, would you consider that your favorite role? I don't, I don't know if he wrote it for me, but I was, I was born to watch Mel Brooks and, and to laugh at right. him. Yeah. I grew up with the producers, the original movie. Yes. And was Zero Mostel. He's one of, the, one of the funniest men in show business that, that ever was. And Gene Wilder. You, you, cannot, you cannot beat that movie for, for timing. Right. And, and, and comedy. But, but actually, Ed, in my opinion, you did. Because I saw you at Main State Music Theater. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, my God, he is better than Nathan Lane. And Nathan Lane was incredible, no question about it. But I thought to myself, when uh, Mel Brooks wrote that, uh, and of course you did that role, and then at the, also at Main State Music Theater, you did Hairspray. And, right. you, and you traveled with Hairspray. Great. Actually, well, I, I didn't travel with it. I did two other companies. I did right. I did the Las Vegas company with uh, Harvey Firestein. Right. And, and tell the audience uh, who Harvey, uh, just how big Harvey Firestein is. Harvey Firestein is the original Edna in uh, in Hairspray. Yeah. Uh, he's also a a renowned playwright. He wrote La Cajo Fall. Right. He wrote Torch Song Trilogy. And, uh, had, uh, and Kinky Boots. He, had, he, he wrote Kinky Boots yeah. with Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Uh, he's also the book writer for the brand new Funny Girl that's coming out. Okay. So Harvey, Harvey is, is quite a talented man and, and a really, really nice guy. Uh, and, you, and you like him. The other thing is, Eddie, uh, you also uh, know another man that I've been sort of in contact with. You and Joyce, your wife, or your lovely wife, and the pictures of you folks going back. Joyce uh, Pursuti. Yes. Uh, you did Annie uh, at the oldest theater in the country, Walnut Street Theater. Mm -hmm. And then you, like, toured with Annie, right? We actually, both of us did tour with the, the 30th anniversary edition of, of Annie. Uh, mm -hmm. I was in the show, and, and Joyce was... Uh, was not about to let me go on tour alone because we don't like being apart that much. There you go. Yeah. And she she came along and she was uh, she was in charge of all of the uh, all of the uh, the swag. She was <laughs> selling selling uh, selling the stuff t-shirts and, <laughs> yeah. and and dealing with all of the Hollywood celebrities right. who wanted who wanted everything. 
everything, <laughs> everything, everything that was in the display case. <laughs> Eddie, one of the things, one of the pictures that we're going to put up, Dino, is a picture of you dressed as a hinny. Uh, in front of the Seattle, I think it's the Seattle Tower. So how, how'd you come up with that idea of dressing up like that? I'm, I'm sorry, you said you're going to show a picture of me dressed as Annie in front of the, of the yeah. Space Needle? <laughs> Why would you do that, Because <laughs> it, it's, it's in your little chain there. I couldn't well, believe it. I one of the it. things that we wanted to do on tour, uh, we had this crazy idea to do an, uh, an Annie Across America yeah. travelogue as, as, a, see, okay. as a gag book yeah. for a gift to the cast after the tour was over. Yeah. And I had this costume. Joyce was in the original um, off-Broadway company of Menopause the Musical. Yes. And one of the, one of the gags they did for uh, Broadway Cares Equ Equity Fights AIDS is the four of them played four different uh, characters through uh, in musical history, in, in musical theater, uh, 40 years later. Right. So we had an Annie costume that, right. that fit that me. Fit you. <laughs> that fit me. So I was able to fold the whole thing up yeah. and, and a bad wig yeah. and stuff it in a small grocery bag yeah. and carry it with me. And myself and the guy who played FDR, every stop that we made, we would go to a prominent like the St. Louis Arch, whatever. The, yeah, the archway, yeah. The, the Space Needle, the. Yeah. The, the trolley, yeah. the trolleys in San Francisco, <laughs> and it would be Annie yeah. <laughs> uh, across America. And uh, those were the pictures, yeah, those are the pictures we took. Another trivia question, if, uh, if you don't mind. Sure. Another connection, you, by the way, there's so many connections in our lives. And you're, you're much younger than I am, but there's so many connections. Not much. Uh, including <laughs> swimming at the boys club, in which, ladies and gentlemen, back then, uh, the boys swam without clothes on, nothing, no bathing suit. I don't know what that was all about, but it's a strange thing. That's an entirely different, different era. <laughs> subject matter that, we, that will be an we'll entirely show unto itself <laughs> we'll at move. another time. Yeah, we'll, we, we will move on. But Ed, you mentioned in your interview what it was like to go into a TV studio the first time, and I went into the same TV studio to see... I'm going to say the name at the same time, Ken, Ken McKenzie. Oh, Ken yeah, McKenzie, right. Yeah. And, but you went on as a talent. I was on there as one of these little kids they'd have on there. They'd show the, you know, clips and stuff and cartoons, and they would give us a hostess Twinkie, whatever. And I remember feeling the same way you did, Ed. When I walked in that studio, I remember thinking, thinking to myself, this is what I want to be doing. And oh, yeah. it took me uh, 60 years to finally get, get to it uh, with this uh, TV show that I have. But... You, you had the stage bug from the second you were born, didn't you? You and your pretty, brothers. Pretty oh, much, really. pretty much. But, but talking about the, the, uh, the TV station, uh, I did eventually get on the Ken McKenzie show yes. at 12 or 13. And you, you were singing. But before, the, before that, it was Captain and the Kids. Yes. It was Lloyd Knight. Lloyd Knight. Captain yes. Lloyd. Yeah, Captain and Lloyd. And yeah. I was a nine-year-old yeah. uh, Cub Scout. Yeah. And, you know, much like... Your studio here, the it's the uh, it's the uh, building down the street. It's now called the Press. The Press Hotel, right? sure. Press yeah. Hotel. Yeah. That was where Channel Thirteen was. Right. And I walked in, and I was absolutely blown away because there were TV cameras, yeah. right. and right. there was the news set, yeah. and that's where the weatherman yeah. does the weather. Yeah. I, I, I need to put a cot in here, and I'm <laughs> just going to live here. I, this is because yeah. I want I want to be here, but. Uh, to get back to your, your question, we were brought up in a very musical family. And well, of course, your brother's a schooner fair. My brothers uh, are, in fact, schooner fair. Yeah, uh, featured, featured on CBS Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, and by the way, Eddie, another trivia question for you. While you were in Most Happy Fellow on Broadway, mm -hmm. your brothers were doing a show in New York City. And uh, Jonathan Edwards, who sang the song Sunshine Go Away Today, was, was the opening act for them. That's right. And on the marquee, it had the three na names of three Oscar-winning actors, and right below those names was Schooner Fair. <laughs> Do you know the names of the three actors? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> the, three, <laughs> the three actors were Richard Dreyfus, Gene Hackman, and Glenn Close. And why were those three names there? Because they were going to give speeches there because I saw them the next night after I saw you, I saw them in a play called Death of the Iron Maiden. Oh, okay. And uh, Gene Hackman, Richard Dreyfuss, and Glenn Close, front row. I was mind blown by it. But to see 
their names on the marquee uh, where, where your brothers played, and then right below, Schooner Fair. I, 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 it was a, a, such a great night. But the, what I wanted to say to you, that when you were in Most Happy Fella, was that your first uh, Broadway performance? Very first Broadway show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it got rave reviews. It got did. Great, great it reviews. Did. And you did a song that we're going to do, hopefully, before this show closes, <laughs> uh, one of my favorites of all time, which was Standing on the Corner. <laughs> Watching all the girls go by. Eddie, I yeah. could not believe uh, that as a, as a boy, young boy, uh, going to grade school, that song would come on and I would sing it with my pals and do the, 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 the shtick. And I'm sitting in that audience watching you do the same song. I turned to my wife, I said, can you believe it? I sang this song as a, as a kid and now my buddy's on Broadway doing it. But you did other Broadway things. You had some other Broadway uh, performances. Like uh, Hairspray. Yes. Uh, right. I, was, I was in the Hairspray company when George went was playing, yes. was playing Edna, oh, and okay. the, George went from Cheers. Yes, yeah. right, yes. Right, yeah, George, he's, uh, he's, he was a delight, and it was a, a great time to be in, be in the show. Uh, and, Ed, uh, just to move to Joyce, Joyce is now a, a rather high on the food chain at a gunquit. She's a, 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 a master of a lot of, that's going on there. And what's her official title at, at a gunquit? She is, she is the Director of Education and Youth Programming. She is actually developing the education department for the Agunquit Playhouse. The Playhouse has for years um, had a summer, summer camp, theater camp for kids, where the kids, uh, it was children's theater for kids, right. you know, but instead of adults for kids, it was kids doing uh, doing theater, uh, what they call pay for play. Kids right. can, you know, the parents uh, pay for their camp. The kids sure. learn a show, they do the show. Joyce is actually creating an academy, hey. which, which is what she did when we had uh, a theater in upstate New uh, York. Right. We had, I remember that. We had the, uh, the Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center. Yes. And before that, she had uh, the theater at West Shore Station in right. Newburgh, but at both venues, she created award-winning academies right. and literally award-winning academies. And, 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 and so she's basically developing the future uh, Tom Hanks and uh, Glenn Close's of she the world. She is. And she's also Tony nominated as an educator. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's, oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, another name I want to throw out is a, a gentleman that has been on the rock and roll cruises that I've been on. I got to hang around with him one night, funniest guy, a wonderful man. I, I said to him, by the way, I got to tell you, hanging around with you is one of, one of the best uh, things I could do. And he goes, well, you should get a life. The same comment Alan <laughs> Alan made, right? You should get. But anyway, you worked with Robert Klein. I did. Yes. And did you like him? I mean, he's, he's a delightful man. He, 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 he was delightful. Yeah. Uh, funny. Just, yeah. I was, I was the... Uh, I was the A2 on that, which is, which is an audio assistant. I see. The other half of my career has been technical theater. Yeah. Uh, because... You're on both sides. You've been on both sides. I've been on both sides of the curtain, yeah. as, as people like to say, uh, mostly because I was a, I was a terrible waiter. <laughs> Me too. But... <laughs> one night, I lasted one night. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm, but mostly because I love the technical, technical yeah. aspects of you it. Do. Yeah. So my survival job between contracts yeah. uh, was doing uh, any kind of technical theater or, yeah. or uh, television. And I spent a lot of time doing uh, television audio. And tell me about you being the host of TV Land's Greatest Moments. Tell me about that. That was an audition that I received from my manager at the time. Yeah. Uh, she said they need a guy to come in and do all of these wraparounds. Uh, TV Land was doing a big promotion of all of the old variety shows. Yes. Sonny and Cher, right. Flip Wilson, right. Laugh-In. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of the, the other ones. The shows we all grew up on. Yeah. yeah, all of that great stuff. And they were doing a half an hour of each one. Yeah. So I was in a tuxedo singing terrible theme songs that they <laughs> that they wrote i mean on purpose oh yeah okay. you know and just this kind of guy that would sing songs like this <laughs> and point to the camera and go hey that's the, you know here comes the sunny and cheer all right and then <laughs> and there were go-go girls yeah, you know yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> doing all this stuff behind and having the best time yeah. and 
that was a it was a four hour evening yeah. of yeah. of old variety shows. How long, did, how long did you do that show? That, that well, that that took that was a six hour day to shoot okay. all of you those wraparounds. Yeah, so, but yeah. that was that was it. That and, host, they, and they played for a long time. And it you, was yeah, it was a. <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast. Uh, so uh, Robert Klein, and, uh, another thing. So folks, the other thing is, <clears throat> Ed, you just recently did a role, and because your, your hair is the same color it is now, I think. I think you said six years ago, and uh, uh, Bill uh, 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 played it on uh, on the show that you were just on, uh, 207 Caldwell, uh, and he played this clip uh, where you are uh, monitoring a guy uh, who's doing a urine test. Uh, and what was the name of the show? Was it? Uh, it was Rescue Me. Rescue Me. Rescue okay. Me. And it was an episode where, where Lieutenant Shea, anybody who who followed Rescue Me, Lieutenant Shea had had a, a heart its situation. Yeah. And all of the guys in the firehouse pretended to be him in order for him to pass his physical. Oh, okay. So they all went to the different, <laughs> the different uh, examinations. Okay. Pretending so, to be him. So, uh, by the way, another trivia. Um, I love doing this. I love connecting. Okay, I'm gonna, and that. okay another miserable fail. Yeah, Go you may, you may <laughs> get this one. You were in a uh, a, a play, a musical, and uh, on stage, uh, in which the title was uh, the exact words that Joe Thomas used to use with us actors when he was trying to refer to another theater, and he would say. What do you think this is? Blank, blank, blank. People are going to pay fifteen dollars a ticket. Do you know what what it was he used to say? Boy, I, I am striking out here, Terry. Okay. Well, he used to say, "What do you think this is? Church basement." <laughs> and you did Diamond Studs. Uh, Portland, Portland players. players. Well, you yeah. played Jesse James. Uh -huh. And by the way, Jesse James, one of the worst human beings that ever lived, not a nice guy. And here's this, you know, nice looking guy coming out and singing and dancing. And he's Jesse James. That, you, know, you know what was fun about that? What? The, uh, the cast all played instruments, if you remember. Yes. We all played guitars and banjos and accordions, and we used the guitars as rifles. Oh, that's If you right. remember that part. I do remember that. Yeah. And Eddie, I didn't know you from Adam. I was involved with Portland Players. I remember going to that show, Diamond Studs, and I remember thinking to myself, geez, who is that guy? And then, of course, I watched you in Music Man, and I watched your career, and then we became friends. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that <clears throat> is, Eddie's not his biggest claim to fame, uh, but at least in my respect it is, uh, when I founded the Portland Players Hall of Fame, uh, Eddie Romanoff was in the first class, just like Elvis Presley would have been the first to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And Eddie, you did a wonderful video where you were out in Vegas and you had Susan Anton, That's right. uh, the great actress, say happy birthday, Portland players. And uh, uh, Kiffy Fitzgerald uh, nominated with you, both actors, the, the, the category being Portland player people that went on to bigger things. And uh, uh, Kiffy Fitzgerald had... Uh, uh, Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick on, and you had Susan Anton. Yeah, and I played it at the at the event. I just was so pleased with that. And if you um, remember, I had a bobblehead of Harvey. Yes, that's right. right. <laughs> you were doing his voice. Right, and I and I held it up in front of me, and it's like, thank you so much. I'm very I'm very happy that 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 uh, Ed has uh, has received this award, and uh, I'm, I love working with him because he's my favorite actor in the world. Yes, thank yeah, you very much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. By the way, folks, I, this could have been a four-hour show because of, uh, your resume reads. It seems like, like one right now, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, I want to mention an actor, that uh, Emmy Award winner, uh, uh, very well known, and uh, a dear friend of yours. And folks, when he, this man gave a commencement speech, he talked about you, and that would be Tony Shalhoub. And he was a friend of yours at, at, uh, at the USM, correct? We went to school together, yeah. Tony, Tony and I, we had several classes together, and when he came back to do the commencement speech, he talked about the day that I dragged him to the, the post office that he didn't, know, he didn't know what he wanted to do after he graduated. And wow. we, were, we were close friends. And the short story is, he, uh, he, he thought about going to graduate school, he wasn't sure, and uh, I said, look, go, go, up, go uh, audition to Yale and see what happens. You know, and he goes, ah, I don't know. I said, what does it hurt to right. fill out an application? Yeah. 
So, I, like I said, I literally dragged him to the post office, and he filled it out, and he sent in the application, uh -huh. and I went, there. And I have one of the, one of the clips, uh, Dino, is uh, uh, the, the newspaper clipping that says, uh, you know, a USM classmate uh, mentioned in Tony Shalhoub's speech, and, and, and he goes to a, a great deal of thanking you, saying, I have to credit my friend Ed Romanoff uh, uh, with getting me this. Uh, I, we're running short, because I, I, but I want to get these names out. Another huge name, huge name that you've been associated with, Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> and did you, did you get to know him at all? Or? Didn't get to know him at all, but that was, that was right here in Portland. That was one of the, was? the, that was one of the last things I did uh, before I moved to New York. Yeah. He played the Cumberland County Civic Center, the Cross, the cross Arena. Right. And they had no one to open for him. Oh my God! They had no one to open for him, and I had the weekend off. I was playing playing pubs and bars up and down the coast, and I did not, uh, I didn't, I had nothing that weekend because I was take, finally taking the weekend off. And Greg Stump, you remember Greg? Who's, yes. You know, he's now a, a successful filmmaker. Yeah. Greg was working for the promoter, and he and he says, Eddie, we got nobody. Can you do this? And it's like, uh, okay. So what did you do, a comedy routine? Well, that was the thing. He, his writer specifically said he wanted uh, a folk singer. He wanted a guy with a guitar because he did not want anybody doing to be comedy. A, doing comedy. Except for the fact that I did a lot of comedy right. in my pub acts. Yeah, but you know? no comedy that night. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, you did. I had 20 minutes to, to keep 6,000 people happy, <laughs> right? And so I got up there and I did my first song. I can't remember yeah. what, what it was. It was probably some up-tempo up -tempo James Taylor or something. Yeah. And uh, this is 1982. Yeah. The tickets were like $100 or more. You know, the front, front seats are a lot of tuxedos and gowns, really? right? Yeah. And it was, you know, it was, <clears throat> those are the pricey seats. And, and I finished... You know, I f finished the opening number and, uh, you know, polite applause, yeah. right? And I, I just said, well, thank you very much. I know, uh, I know you all didn't come here to see me. And this drunken voice from the back of the house said, yeah, Rodney, get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at the guy and I said, well, I didn't come here to see you either, so sit down. <laughs> yeah. And I got to tell you, I, I uh, saw Rodney Dangerfield in, in uh, Vegas. Uh, and, and then bought a signed red tie, uh, which, uh, which I still have. And uh, we got five minutes, and I don't want to, I, I, I did want to uh, act with you, uh, but I also wanted to do this so badly. Uh, Ed, um, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, uh, to sing with me. Come on, buddies. Watching, Watching all, all the girls go by. by. Is that my recording? Standing, Standing on, on the, the corner, corner watching, watching all the, the girls go by. Take it. Brother, you don't know a nicer occupation. That's right. Matter of fact. Matter of fact. Neither do I. <laughs> then standing on the corner, watching all the girls, watching all the girls, watching all the girls go by. <laughs> Uh, Ed, I gotta tell you, uh, I, uh, I sang with your brothers. I did uh, Charlie on the MTA. That's right. I sang with Don Campbell. Uh, I sang with my friend Roger Pierce. And, uh, but that was a highlight for me to be able uh, to sing. Because, Eddie, you also played another trivia question. You also played a role that I played in high school in a play. We had the same role. The hint's gonna be. Knowing I'm on the street where you live, you played Freddie Einsford Freddie Hill. Freddie Einsford Hill, yes. I. Wow, wow, yeah. That uh, that was a yeah. That was about 45 pounds ago in brown hair. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I remember my opening line. How do you do? How do you do? I remember uh, doing that, and uh, that's when my teacher said, "You know, Derry is the biggest ham I've ever known. <laughs> He's got grease paint in his blood." And uh, so when I went over and tried out at Portland Players for my first play, Joe said to me. Listen, you have some stage presence. Can you come back out and try for the role of Curly in Oklahoma? I said, you mean the lead in Oklahoma? So the, he said, can you sing? I said, yeah, I can sing. The next night I come back, I'm doing, there's a bright golden haze in the meadow, and Joe goes, excuse me, Derry, Derry, you cannot sing. 
I thought you said you could sing. Where did you sing? I said, in the high school chorus. He goes, the high school chorus. <laughs> and, but he did give me the lead and no, no sex please with British. Eddie, we, I want to close with the books. Oh, okay. You're, you're doing uh, uh, my <clears throat> book with my daughter. Yes. Uh, a full circle. Yes. Uh, and you're right in the process of doing that now. This is the book, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, that, is, that is my book. But you also did all these books, and one of them you got an award for. You got an award, an audio book of the... Of the yeah, let me, let me dig that one out. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't mind um, <clears throat> talking about it. Oh, my God, yeah. Angel of the Ghetto. Yeah. Angel of the Ghetto. Yeah. This is the story of... This man, Sam Solaz, yeah. he was a uh, he was a hero of uh, of World War II yeah. of of the Holocaust. Uh, at the short story is at 14 years of age, he escaped the death train to Treblinka yes. through one of those little teeny tiny windows. Yes, squeezed out and escaped into the woods and spent the next two years the, or the end of the the war helping people in all of the Polish ghettos oh my goodness. Uh, with clothing and ammunition right. and, and uh, food and escaping and, and helping them with everything. He was, he was amazing as a teenager. Right. When the war ended, he immigrated to America, uh, worked for a, um, a butcher, worked for a, a meat packing company in New Jersey, yeah. eventually opened his own in New York City, yeah. and to this day, it's still running. It's oh one of the goodness. most successful meat purveyors in the country. Yeah. Uh, at the time when he opened his business, uh, he was providing steaks and chops to Peter Luger, Cl uh, Twenty One Club, yes, um, all the big places, all of all of the the uh, the Pierre Hotel, right. and um, Angel of the Ghetto is. Just this. And that's the one that won the award, and you got. This is a. Fa it's a fascinating, fascinating story about this man, and and I I encourage anybody who has any interest in the Holocaust, uh, or the truth of World War II, to to read this book or to listen listen to the audio book. I'm extremely proud uh, that you would be doing the, the book with my daughter, in which you're only doing have to do two voices. Uh, I I haven't heard it yet. I heard a, a brief snippet. Uh, when you were on uh, the 207 show, and I can't wait to have it come out. Um, but I want to say to you that over the years, I've watched your career from diamond studs uh, to this uh, aspect of your career, and not once have I ever seen you either falter or do something less than 100%. Uh, I want to commend you on your career. Uh, you made a joke about me saying I was the greatest litigator in the United States. Uh, no, no, I, no, North America. North America. No, I think that's what you told me one day. <laughs> I'm sure so, I did. <laughs> but let me, inter let me interrupt you, Derry. This is very high praise for, yeah. coming from you, and I, I, I really appreciate it. For you to compare me to, to some of your heroes is, yeah, is, is very, yeah, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm, I, that's just very, very high praise, and, and, and you're, you're just very sweet to yeah. say. It's well-deserved. Uh, the Romanoffs, folks, you can see the Romanoffs in Schooner Fair. If you Google up Eddie, you can learn all about his career, and it's not over yet. Eddie, thank you so much for coming on uh, the Derry Runlet Show, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in many great adventures, especially full circle when we get the award for uh, the best-looking guy a book has been written about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Derry. See you next month uh, on the Derry Runlet Show. Derry. This, this is a pleasure. <laughs>